Episode number 226, Building a Church Communications Team That Scales Up with Holly Tate. Part two, let's do it. This is the definitive podcast for helping you plan, create, and execute dynamic worship experiences at your church. Useful, practical content in the areas of production, worship, communications, first impressions, and more. This is Making Sunday Happen. Well, hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Merry Christmas. I hope after your Christmas Eve services this week, you'll get a chance to relax and spend some time with your family. I know how hard you're working. I've been where you are, so I know the hours that you're putting in this week at Christmas time. I know the sacrifices that your family is making this week. Uh, and if nobody sees it, I know exactly what you're going through. So thank you for your service for the kingdom. It matters. Even if no one else sees it, it matters for the kingdom. You're making a difference. So thank you for all the extra hours, all the work that you're putting in this week to make your Christmas services incredible. This week's episode is sponsored by the digital and home release of the movie Overcomer, the new film from Alex and Stephen Kendrick. To catch my full interview with Stephen and also with actress Sherry Rigby, check out 1230.media forward slash Overcomer. There you'll also see behind-the-scenes interviews about the film and how you can pick up the movie on digital, Blu-ray, and DVD uh, for your family and your church. Great movie to watch over Christmas, too. So if you have the family together, this is a great one. Very, very clean movie. Um, great message about our identity in Christ. Um, so feel free to, to pick it up, check it out, order it on digital, get it on Blu-ray. Check it out, 1230.media forward slash Overcomer for the interviews. We'll link you over um, to go pick up the movie as well. So 1230.media forward slash Overcomer. Check it out. This week on the show, I'll wrap my conversation with Holly Tate from Vanderblumen, and we will continue to talk about leading up, how to build processes and systems for your communications team, how to adapt your team to the ever-changing landscape of communications, and more. So we're going to jump right back into my interview with Holly right after this about Overcomer. Check this out. I'm down three coaches, but I do think I have a solution for cross-country. No. I don't even like running. Uh, why would anyone want to do this? You are my best option. I had one girl show up, and she's got asthma. Oh, you mean Hannah Scott. Why well, have a season with one runner? One runner matters. Thomas, you got time for a visit? Hello, coach. So you changed sports, and you still got no team. Well, that's sad even for me. Your life is worth so much more than this. To who? What have you allowed to define you? Where's your team? She's right there. Is that? That's Hannah. Run, Hannah! Overcomer. Hey guys, Overcomer from the Kendrick Brothers is now available on digital DVD and Blu-ray. I recently had the opportunity to chat with the director and star of that movie, Alex Kendrick. Here's a little bit of our conversation together. Check this out. And one thing that you guys uh, do in the movies that you create that I really like is you really talk to the church. So uh, a lot of times in, in Christian movies that we've seen in the past, there's this big salvation experience or whatever, which is great. But you guys uh, really are intentional about talking to the church. And especially with this one, you guys talk to the theme of identity, right? Tell me about that a little bit. We do. So, you know, our, our core audience is to edify the church. When people say you're preaching to the choir, that is exactly what we're doing. <laughs> it's very intentional. Uh, people treat it like it's a sin, but the choir needs uh, the word of God as well and to grow. Um, our burden is that we help the church be the church. And so we pray for every theme. This time the Lord prompted us toward identity in Christ. Uh, you know, most people put their identity in their job or their feelings, even even Christians yeah. put their identity in things that uh, are not founded on uh, the unchanging character of Jesus Christ. And so there's still some instability in the church because we're waved back and forth with emotions, feelings, 
um, things like that. So we, we were reminded by the Lord, remind my people that in Christ is where you find your identity. He's the one that loves you more than anyone else. He's the one that knows you better than anyone else. Yeah. And he's the one that has the authority to tell you who you are. So that's the theme of overcomer. And uh, it's a tough theme. It's not one of those easy ones where you, you get it. Hey, I should pray more like in war room or I need to be uh, you know loving toward my spouse like in fireproof. This one you have to kind of chew on. And identity in Christ, uh, especially if you read Ephesians 1, is something that takes some processing, but it was an important uh, important thing for us. To catch my full interview with Alex, along with my interviews with producer Stephen Kendrick and actress Sherry Rigby for Overcomer, check out 1230.media forward slash Overcomer. That's 1230.media forward slash Overcomer. Now on to part two of my interview with Holly Tate from Vanderblumen. Hit it. All right, let me go back to something that you said about if we doubled overnight. Yeah. Um, which I, I love this across the board uh, because I, I think that sometimes we don't dream big enough or we pray and we're really not expecting like big prayers to be in. What if my entire volunteer team doubled overnight? Yes. What if my entire communications team doubled? What if our congregation doubled in a month? Mm-hmm. What if the actual things that we are doing worked? Big time. Yes. Would we, would we have the systems in place to, to handle that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, let, let's speak to that and maybe let's break it down into some categories. All right. So uh, maybe we start with brand guidelines. Mm-hmm. Uh, so maybe talk to me about that and how it, once we put that on paper, now that is established so that we can, we don't have to uh, invent the wheel as we go. We have that established and we can refer to it and use it. So talk to me about brand guidelines. Well, I love what you said about dreaming big, because I think one of the things that I've seen happen over and over again, especially with church plants is, um, you know, that founding leader doesn't even know how they grew to where they are yeah. because it happened organically, which is beautiful. And the Lord blessed their efforts and they just hit a nerve <laughs> of some sort that allowed them to grow. But then they hit a lid and they've grown and grown and grown and grown. People are coming because they're attracted to the church. Um, They're finding community there. But then people realize, wait a second, it's actually really hard to get plugged into a small group. And so then they are really excited. They've been attending the church for three months, but then they try to get plugged into a small group and there's no systems and processes in place because no one internally is thinking about how to set up those systems and processes because it used to be back in the day, it was well, yeah, you just walked up to the pastor and he introduced you to a small group leader because there were only 50 people in the congregation and it was really easy. Right. And that's what happens when we don't think about scalability. We use the systems and processes that worked when we were a church of 50 and now we're a church of 3,500 and it's not working. And you will have a large back door, meaning people are going to come in, but they're going to leave because it's, you're making it really difficult for them to get plugged in. It's a huge step for someone to raise their hand and say, I'm ready to get plugged into a small group, or I want to be baptized, or I need to be discipled. We need to continually remember how big of a deal that is Mm -hmm. and to make it really easy for people to make that step when they're ready. So I just wanted to kind of say that before we talk about scalability, because a lot of times it's like, ah, yawn, like, I don't want to think about systems and processes. I want to reach people for Jesus. And I would say that a lot of times they go hand in hand. So absolutely, hundred percent. from a communications team standpoint, um, yes, brand guidelines is like the foundation of building a system, uh, scalable systems and processes on your team. The reason for that is I bet that most people listening right now probably got an email today or yesterday, <laughs> or you're going to get one in an hour. That's like, Hey, Holly, can you send me your, our, your logo? Like, where's our logo? <laughs> it's like, ah. you know, those emails, when they come in my inbox, I get frustrated, but then I have to realize and do some self-reflection. Wait a second. If people are emailing me asking for our logo, I have not done a good job of making it easy for our team members to find. So, um, that's why brand guidelines is super important because it's going to be able to uh, help free up your inbox and your project management list from answering those repeatable questions like, what's our logo, font usage, you know, do you have a letterhead or a template for 
you know, Sunday's sermon series or notes or bulletin, whatever it might be, whatever those repeatable tasks or requests, that's where I would start with your brand guidelines. Um, so it doesn't have to be this like huge to do. It could be literally a Google doc with just, here's where you can find our logo. Here's our, uh, you know, our font, you know, here's our mission, vision values, super simple. Start somewhere with your brand guidelines. Good. All right. Can you give me, uh, is there a set list that you have on what you include either in that Google drive or, yeah, or that would be my, what? So I might be at a church. I don't know what that is, or I don't know what all to include. Can you give me a short list? Yes. I would say just start with the basics. So definitely your logo, your colors. Um, as a communications person, it probably drives you crazy when people use like the wrong blue or the wrong green. It drives me crazy. <laughs> so make sure you put your colors on there. Hey guys, you know, here's the hex code or whatever for our colors. Um, your mission and your vision, your values as an organization. Approved photos. This is really important, especially in churches where we like to use photos of kids. There's there's some people that don't want their kids on, you know, photo on the internet. And there's some adults that don't want their photos on the internet. So make sure that you have a, you know, folder of approved photos that your teams can use to promote different things. Um, I would even encourage you to think about approved B-roll so that your video team is not having to make, you know, tons and tons of extra B-roll all the time. Just have a set you know, some uh, videos that they can use that B roll that's approved. Um, and again, anything that's kind of a like starter list, anything that you get asked for again and again and again, put that in your brand guidelines and it will save you so much time in the long run. Good. Good. All right. Let's talk about in-house stuff versus outsourcing stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you guys have, um, I mean, there's, ministries and churches that have come to us for outsourcing and uh, and we talked to them about well what do you have in house that you can do what's a good to outsource so that we're not selling them something that they don't that they already have or things like that so talk to me about when to keep it in house when to outsource yes so i stole this exercise from my friend justin trapp who mm -hmm. is a pastor and now he heads up ministry pass and seminary um, but he told me this story. He was actually when he was um, on sabbatical, he was either preparing for sabbatical or maybe he did this when he got back from sabbatical, but he realized that he was doing a lot of things, most of which were things that a lot of other people could do. And so he separated his to-do list into, um, into different categories. So example that I use, I mean, these numbers can be any numbers. Uh, the number is irrelevant. The what I would encourage every marketer communications person to think about is think of four different tiers. The highest tier being what only you can do. What is something that you have to do? Everything else below that, think about outsourcing it. So some simple numbers, maybe think about like $10 bucket, $25 buckets, $50 bucket, and then that $100 bucket. Again, you might not be making $100 an hour. That's okay. I'm not saying you should make $100 an hour. <laughs> um, but the idea here is, is that that top tier should be what you're focusing on. That's usually strategy. That's planning. Um, if you're leading a team, that's leading that team. It's developing people. It's developing your, um, you know, things like your persona, your brand guidelines, thinking about the big picture. Everything under that, those are the things that I would encourage you to think about outsourcing. A caveat to that, though, would be as you're adding up what's in that bucket, if what's in that bucket is a similar skill set and it adds up to a part time or full time person, that's when you might think about bringing that person in house. Because a great example of this is video. I mean, we're at a place these days where a lot of churches are making videos like multiple times a week. That's really, really expensive to outsource if you're making three to five videos every week of things that are happening internally at your church. It's different if you're making a promo video for something that doesn't have to be filmed at your church. But right. if it's about internal things where you want your church or your pastor in the video, you mm -hmm. might think about getting an a, you know, in-house videographer. Yeah. But if you're just doing a few videos a month or um, a great example would be podcasts. We outsource our podcast to you guys and you do an mm -hmm. amazing job. So, hey, if you guys have a podcast, you should be outsourcing it to 1230 Media. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Another caveat I would say though is 
think about the perspective you want on the project. So sometimes in-house, if we're too close to something, um, sometimes it can be hard to be creative or innovative when we've done something year in and you know year out. So that's where you might want to bring in somebody from the outside to help you just to have another set of eyes on it. Um, somebody that can bring a new energy to a project. Um, you know, if it's a certain campaign or a design project or whatever that might be. So simple answer to your question, start thinking about those buckets. What can only you do focus on that and try to outsource everything else. Um, it allows you to be agile as well. We've gone through different spurts in my seven and a half years here. I've outsourced video. I've done video in house. We've done the podcast in house. Now we're outsourcing it to you guys. We've done our um, website redesign twice. We've done it in house twice. We've outsourced it. Like we we kind of go back and forth just depending on where we are as a team and what mm -hmm. talent we're looking for for that specific project. Um, but at the end of the day, I would love to see our organization stop thinking about like, oh, we have a need. We should hire somebody. That might be the case, but it also might be a good solution to outsource. And that's what we at Vanderbilt can help you think through because we help churches hire <laughs> and build their best team. So if you're struggling with, um, I just had a conversation with somebody a few weeks ago about a finance director. They were trying to figure out, you know, do we bring this person in house or do we outsource it? Um, and we're happy to have that conversation with you guys because it's really important that you think through it proactively. Yep. Uh, okay. I'm going to add my opinion here and you feel We'd free love to, to hear your opinion, to... Carl speak to it. So um, I, I walk into a lot of churches uh, and on the, from the production side, communication side, e every department, some of them think that uh, this position is too valued to either have a volunteer do it or to outsource it. Mm -hmm. And I would say from a production end, what I found even at a New Spring church, which mm -hmm. is where I worked at one church that I served, I I had everything was a volunteer. Oh no no not the director of the entire service. Yeah, no no not audio. That's too important because uh, yeah, vol volunteer. It will train them up to where they can execute at a high level, but yeah, but volunteer. So I would say hire a leader mm -hmm. and outsource or use volunteers for execution. Would you agree exactly. with that? Exactly. Yep, totally. You nailed it. I, that's exactly it. Because that leader is the person who's going to be able to build those scalable systems and processes. You guys couldn't have a volunteer run the director of services unless you had scalable systems and processes. Yeah. And so you're exactly right. You've got to hire the leaders and, and outsource the execution. And if, I, if, I'm all, if I'm always doing it, then I have no time to think through Yep. The team, look at it from a 30,000 foot view, look at it from the outside. Okay, that person probably should go here. If I'm right in the middle of the action, I'm not out to where I can see it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, okay, yep. a, couple, a couple more things as we wrap today. Um, you talked about uh, clarifying job descriptions and mm -hmm. also building transparency in my workflow. So kind of mm -hmm. hit on those two things for me real quick. Well, you brought up the job descriptions thing earlier, which I yeah. so appreciate because I really do believe, and we have a template on our website, just Google Vanderbilt and volunteer job description. It should come up um, where you can download it. Just, just a basic start. I mean, it's, it's broad. It's not specific to communications, but the idea here is this is going to help you on so many levels. Not only does it help provide accountability between you and the volunteer. I mean, how many times have you had a volunteer where you're like, what were they thinking? Like they just totally missed the mark. Well, Think about from your leadership perspective, did you set proper expectations? It might have been you. It might have been you. Yeah. So um, that job description is really going to help you set expectations up front. It's going to help you recruit the right people. It's going to help them, um, you know, make sure that they're hitting the mark and what you're asking. And then ultimately, it's going to help you, again, we've said it a million times, <laughs> build those scalable systems and processes so that when that person leaves, you have the job description to replace them. How many times have been like, oh my goodness, Carl is taking a break from children's ministry. He was the best storyteller. Like, how are we ever going to replace him? But maybe Carl was doing so much more than that. And we just never really knew because we didn't have a job description. So yes, right. job descriptions are huge from a communication standpoint. 
I think that's really important. Even if you're outsourcing, I think it's helpful to have, you yes. know, a lot of times we call it, you know, a scope of work, like SOW um, or job description, just something that is helpful. You know, we did that with you guys. It was, you mm -hmm. did a great job of asking me like, okay, what do you need from us? What exactly is this going to look like? Mm -hmm. So that there's expectations on both ends. It's going to help you um, just kind of get ahead of any frustrations that might come up um, later if you're on the same page. Yep. Okay. Talk to me about transparency. You, you hit on this a little bit. And I, I love yeah. the... Um, you know, really be transparent, especially with project management systems. Now you can dip in and kind of see, okay, you know, a tracking of your work and that sort of thing. Is there anything else that you want to hit on there as far as being super transparent in my workflow? Yeah. So you nailed it. I mean, I think if you're not, if you're in communications and you're not using a project management system, whether it be, um, I love Asana, people use Basecamp, even if it's just a simple spreadsheet. But the thing is, I would encourage you that it's organizationally viewed, right? Like give people permissions. Don't be secretive about your work. Let people see what you're working on. Be open about it. Let them see your deadlines and what's in the pipeline. Um, and then the other thing is you might consider sending a weekly update. I do this. This is something that my boss here at Vanderbilt asked me to start doing. Um, and it's been really helpful so that my boss can see what I'm up to every week. He doesn't have to assume, um, you know, I don't have to worry that I haven't communicated anything because it's all there in the weekly update. And I send it every week at the same time so that he always knows here's what's coming up. Here's my pipeline. And then like what you said earlier, he can give me feedback of saying, Hey, let's, you know, I see you're working on this. That's this other thing is really actually more important. Can you speed that up and pause on this? And we get to go back and forth um, about that through that weekly update and it's super helpful. So that's another way to yeah. build transparency into the workflow. But I think it really builds trust, especially across organizations, oh, sorry, especially across generations. Um, we as, you know, boomers, Gen Xers and millennials all have very different ways of working. So if you can own your projects and be super proactive about communicating what you're working on, then you're going to get ahead of a lot of tension that might come up um, down the line. So um, yeah, project management systems, weekly updates, over communicate. Good. All right. As we leave each other, give me uh, a little bit on Vanderbloom and what you, what you guys do, because a lot of our audience, um, there are times when, hey, I'm looking for another church job or I, I want to move positions, but there's not one available in my church. Give me yeah. a little snapshot of what you guys do and how you guys serve the church. So we serve churches and Christian organizations from Christian schools, nonprofits, um, with hiring and succession planning services. So William Vanderblum, our founder, was a pastor for 15 years, and he saw a CEO transition happen in the corporate world in 90 days. And he thought, oh my goodness, why does it take churches literally sometimes years to find their senior leadership. This has got to change because the church deserves the best. So he yep. started Vanderbilt on a card table and a prayer almost 10 years ago. And now we've gotten to um, do over 1200 staffing assignments in 48 of the 50 states and churches across the theological spectrum. And it is what gets our team out of bed every day is just to honestly champion the local church. And um, that is our job is to make sure that we are helping the local church build their best teams so that they can build the kingdom in their communities. And we do that by helping them hire the right people and plan for succession. Well, you're going to see the website and all the information on our show notes, but vanderblumen.com is the website. Be sure to check uh, those guys out. Incredible services um, that you guys provide. So thank you so much for that and for your time today. Really appreciate it, Holly. Well, you too, Carl. You guys have been a gift to us at 1230 Media with helping us with our podcast. We're so grateful. Y'all are awesome. So if you're listening today, I mean, you already know about 1230 Media because you're listening to this, but um, yeah, these, these guys are amazing and has been such a gift to our team at Vander Women. So thank you, Carl. Thanks so much. Have a great day. You too. Bye. The show notes for this episode are available now at makingsundayhappen.com. Well, consider this a reverse mailbag this week as I'm going to be putting a few things in your stocking for Christmas. So here are a few discounts exclusive to podcast viewers and listeners only. So you're not going to see these anywhere else. You can't get these online or anywhere. So this is exclusive just to you guys. 
So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening over Christmas. So really appreciate it. So here's some things for your stocking. I'm going to give you some coupon codes to use for ready-made and custom media at 1230 Media, okay? So here we go. Ready-made stuff. Here is a code for 50% off of our Go Unlimited library. 50%, okay? So that takes our subscription from $49 a month down to $25 a month, okay? So huge Christmas gift for you. Just go to... 1230.media forward slash go, 1230.media forward slash go, use the code GO2020. Okay, so it's code GO2020, code 2020 at checkout when signing up for our library. So you're going to go to 1230.media forward slash go, hit sign up now, walk through the checkout, hit apply code, type in GO2020, and it takes the library down to $25 a month. So that is everything. Mini movies, service packs, series in a box, all of them, all song videos, everything, everything, everything in the library. Now, one box costs $59. One box is $59. You're getting the entire library for $25 a month. Okay? So really want to bless you guys this Christmas. So 50% off Go Unlimited. 1230.media forward slash go, code 20, go 2020. Okay, for custom media, I want you to go to 1230.media forward slash quote, and in the description for your project, I want you to type in the code MSH20. That's making Sunday happen, MSH20 for 20% off your next custom media project. Now, our, our, our standard discount, if we're uh, doing something online or, or talking with, with people, is 10% off, okay? So normally we don't go over 10% off. This is a special discount just for you, 20% off your next custom media project, okay? So MSH20, put it in the description box uh, for your next custom me- media project, 20% off. So if you're ordering a custom sermon bumper, they're five hundred dollars. It's going to take it down to four hundred, so it's going to knock a hundred dollars off uh, a, a normal sermon bumper. Okay, so great deal for you. Okay, twelve thirty dot media forward slash quote, and type in MSH twenty in the description box for your project. Okay, so I know I spent a lot of time there, guys, but I really wanted to gift you guys some big stuff this Christmas, and really thank you for being a loyal listener and watcher. Uh, of the podcast this year. So thank you so much. Uh, These are very special, very exclusive deals for podcast folks only. So thank you for listening, and thank you for listening over Christmas especially. I hope these discounts bless your church huge. That's our heart. We need to eat. We need to provide for our families, but we're not in this for the money, guys. If we were if we were in this for the money, you guys know you'd be in the same boat. We'd be getting uh, different jobs than pastor and worship leader and uh, creating content for the church, okay? So we're in ministry just like you are, and we're here to help, okay? So anything that we can do to do that, we would love to. Starting this week, I will be collecting new questions for our mailbag segment, And we're going to do something really cool this year. I mentioned it a little bit last week, but we want you to send us a selfie video of yourself asking questions for the show. So I want you to go to makingsundayhappen.com forward slash mailbag. Or last week I mentioned 1230.media forward slash mailbag. Both of them get there, okay? So 1230.media forward slash mailbag or makingsundayhappen.com forward slash mailbag. Either one uh, will get you to our landing page, okay? So be sure to shoot shoot your video horizontally. Turn your phone horizontal on your phone or uh, on your your camera and, and upload your video there on our landing page. So for every question that we use on the show, we are going to send you our production team handbook. This is a massive jump start for your production team. It includes organizational charts, uh, job descriptions, everything that you <laughs> ever everything that you're gonna need for your production team. Even includes a link in the book for editable documents. So it, it really creates a handbook 
um, you create your own handbook for your production team. And you can really use it for any volunteer team. Uh, but it, it came from uh, my experience at New Spring. We went from about 30 volunteers when I got to the campus I was at to over 200 volunteers uh, when I left. So we really, really beefed up that production team. So everything in the book is everything that we did uh, at New Spring and some things that I learned along the way at a couple other churches and and uh, through leading the volunteer team at, at the NRB, which is the National Religious Broadcasters uh, Convention. Uh, by the way, would love to see you there end of February. So if you're coming, would love to uh, to see you in Nashville for that. But that book is absolutely free when you submit a question to us. So again, 1230.media forward slash mailbag. Shoot your selfie video. Keep your questions under 60 seconds, if you would. And we would love to air it here on the show. And we'll answer your question here on the show as well. So I'm looking for over 50 people, 52 weeks of the year next uh, next year. So uh, 52 people. Uh, I need you to to send in your question. So I'm looking for 50 spots to fill. 1230.media forward slash mailbag for all the details. The direct URL for our podcast is makingsundayhappen.com. And next week on the show, I welcome my friend Doug Hood. Now, Doug is a worship leader and has written the book Worship Unicorn, The Worship Unicorn. And I'll talk with Doug about ways to pursue authentic and engaging worship. Worship. So you're going to hear directly from a fantastic worship leader next week. I believe in you guys. You're making a difference for the kingdom. Keep it up. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Go out there and create some incredible worship experiences this Christmas. And I'll see you next week. Making Sunday Happen is a production of the Ministry of 1230 Media. For show notes, archive episodes, and more free resources for your church, visit makingsundayhappen.com.